Hey y'all, so uh, just to start off, if my voice cracks or anything, it's because I'm a little under the weather today, um, but I wanted to um, get this out, get this going, um, so that you all would have this information. So you should be seeing a screenshot of James Woods and, let me see who this guy is, he put this in his report. Okay, his name is Steinmeier, there's no first name, it just says Supervisor Steinmeier. I'll get his first name later, um, it's not really important. But I just wanted to let you know who was in this photo. So it's a screenshot from a ring camera, one of the ring cameras at Jeremy's house. And this was on November 29th. So you should be able to see James Woods, Steinmeier, Jeremy's black vehicle that is backed into the driveway. And then parked in the street is a big gray truck. For those of you who don't know, they were there because Jeremy had a violation of probation warrant out. And he had the violation of probation warrant because James Woods claimed that Jeremy did not pull down his old YouTube channel. Um, although Jeremy told him that he did not have access to it, although James Woods put that into his report, um, he still decided to go ahead and file an affidavit for his arrest. You can see here that the violation is a technical violation, meaning it's not a new crime, and Jeremy was unable to pull down the YouTube channel. It even says that the offender reported that he cannot access the account. There have been multiple attempts to have that YouTube channel pulled down. Attempts to log into the account, um, attempts to reach out to Google, reach out to YouTube through email, chat. We even sent a fax to YouTube with a fax delivery receipt asking for the YouTube channel to come down. It is almost impossible to get in contact with Google slash YouTube. I don't know if anyone else has ever tried to do it, but it's almost impossible to get in contact with them. So I'm showing a screenshot of Jeremy's account and it's an account recovery. So whenever he tries to log in or anyone tries to log in, it won't let him do it because he has to have a verification code from a number ending in 92. Jeremy has not had access to the number ending in 92 in over a year. That number is no longer in service. Now, I don't know if someone else has the number now because you know they recycle numbers, but he does not have access to that number. He's not even with the same company anymore. So how is he supposed to get into the account if he doesn't have access to the phone number that is needed for the sign in? When you try to sign in over and over again, eventually Google will say that it cannot sign you in. It cannot sign you in because you don't remember the password and you no longer have that number and you no longer have that device. And so this will go round and round and round where you're trying to log in. It says it's an account recovery mode and then nothing happens and you're never able to access the account. Of course, Jeremy already told James Woods about this. James Woods is bullshit, so he's gonna pretend like he doesn't know that that ever happened. That Jeremy did not sign in in front of him and Lisa Barker multiple times showing that he doesn't have access to the account anymore. So this whole YouTube channel thing is the reason for Jeremy's violation of probation. It sounds stupid, it sounds simple. It is stupid, it is simple. And it's just a way for them to go after him. While I was reading over James Woods' affidavit and then his additional information in the second part of the affidavit, I'll get into that later, I noticed a few things. So in his first affidavit, James Woods listed, I think it was around 20 special conditions. So I wanted to kind of break this down a little bit. I'm gonna do it like group by group. And if you notice that for this group, it states that Jeremy has not completed any of it. At least that's what James Woods put in his affidavit, his sworn affidavit, by the way. So the first thing states that the defendant has to speak to the probation officer regarding traveling. That is traveling overseas. That is in the judge's orders. I'm sure you all have that by now or have seen it. If not, I will probably put it up at some point. That was regarding traveling overseas, getting his passport. James Woods claimed that Jeremy never did that. Jeremy did speak to him about that. That was one of the major issues they had at the beginning. They even had a meeting about it with Lisa Barker. So they had a meeting about the traveling, but James Woods is stating that they never talked about it, that they never discussed it. It will be very interesting to see if he goes on the stand and if he lies. So the next group has to do with Metro State. It has to do with you know being seen as affiliated with Metro State, speaking about Metro State, 
wearing anything that has Metro State on it, and Jeremy has not done any of those things. And yet it still says that the status is not completed. There's also something here about having to transfer all of his physical property that has to do with Metro State, and he can only work with his attorney to do that, to get rid of everything. And he's already done all of that. Anything that is sold is going through his attorney. So his attorney is the one that is helping him sell everything. He sold a lot of the cars, a lot of the motorcycles, and he actually had time after he was released to have all of that done. James Woods lied, James Woods and Lisa Barker, just to be clear. They lied to Jeremy, they lied to me, they lied to his release officer, they lied to Jeremy's family, they lied to everyone and claimed, oh, the judge said he has to have it done before he's released, he has to have everything done, he can't have any Metro State vehicles in the driveway, and they were fucking lying the whole time. This was a major reason why Jeremy was not able to go to his home after his release because they wanted to make sure that everything was removed from the home that had to do with Metro State, although he had a lot of time after that to get everything together. It made sense because why would a judge order someone to have something done before they're released? They can't even control the situation. But these fucking idiots knew that and they lied to everyone, they deceived everyone. And that's why Jeremy was staying at a hotel for two weeks. I mean, it was so bad that Jeremy had a Metro State sticker on a filing cabinet in his office and James Wood said, oh, you can't come home until you remove the sticker from the filing cabinet. This is how miserable and how pathetic this person is. He's so pathetic and so miserable, and so is his girlfriend. But let's move on. So the last piece, because I kind of cut it off a little bit, um, the last piece is about the pepper ball. So he doesn't have any pepper balls or anything like that. So this list right here should say completed. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. I already talked about the pepper ball, so he doesn't have any of that shit. He's not conducting any funeral escorts he's already accepted the police I don't know how the fuck that's not completed um and he shall not have any contact with witnesses or victims let me talk about that really quickly so being the liar that James Woods is he was stating that oh you cannot have contact with certain people we're not really sure because we haven't really seen the witness list but we're pretty sure that you can't have contact with certain people i'm going to make a separate video about that because that video deserves to be on its own long story short when they had the hearing, the victim list was there, the witness list was there, and guess whose name wasn't on the victim list or the witness list? Exactly. But we'll get into that later. Like I said, that's a separate video, but it was a whole ball of bullshit. Okay, so no contact, acknowledge. So all of that should be completed because to my knowledge, Jeremy's not hanging out with the people who made the impersonation reports. And then it says that he did not pay any court costs or fines. Well, that's a lie because you can see that shit online that he's paid court costs and fines. In fact, James Woods made him pay hundreds of dollars before he was able to even go and see his mom in Orange County like who does that I don't know if James has a mother maybe he doesn't have a mother and that's why this is not a big deal to him but who makes someone pay to go see their fucking mom okay so early termination that's probably not gonna happen um transfer supervision that should be completed because it was an Orange County case and it was transferred to Osceola so I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about and then this bullshit at the bottom which says cannot enter specify location that is not what the judge stated. If you look at the judge's orders, it states that Jeremy has to remain in a specified location. So his case is out of Orange County. He lives in Osceola County. Most people will not care about the fact that this says cannot enter a specified location and her order says remain in a specified location, but there is a major difference. When she states remain in a specified location, because I was at the sentencing hearing, I was there, so I heard what she said live. She said the Ninth Judicial Circuit, which is Orange and Osceola counties. When he states cannot enter a specified location, she never said there's a location he cannot enter. So if he wants to travel to Miami or if he wants to travel to New York or whatever, as long as he has permission, he's allowed to do that. You will not be able to find any paperwork that states a specific location that Jeremy cannot enter. That's not true. That is false. He actually had a discussion with Lisa Barker about going to his beach house because Jeremy has a family beach house on the water and he wanted to go there and they were discussing 
discussing that, letting him go there. He likes to go to Colorado because he loves to ski. So they were talking about that as well. So there's no specific place that he's not allowed to go to. So let's talk about the next part. And this part irritates me a lot. It says no driving. So driver's license is supposed to be revoked or suspended for six months. Well, it was revoked for six months. The DMV received the information from the judge and the DMV decided to revoke Jeremy's license while he was incarcerated, which makes the most sense. They decide when they want to do what they want to do. So around this time, Jeremy decided that he wanted to go to trucking school. And this is when it became a fucking issue. I told Jeremy to be very careful about telling Lisa Barker and James Woods about his plans for the future because they're haters. They make maybe like 50,000 a year, maybe. And Jeremy was gonna be making a lot more than that. When people don't have a lot and they see that you're getting more or you have more in life, they get really weird, especially when they're haters like those two. So despite the fact that Jeremy's license was coming back clean and clear, and I'm gonna show you guys a screenshot of that that I did this morning. It was coming back clean and clear. They were claiming that, oh no, um, we're not really sure if you're supposed to have a license. And James Woods, with his bitch ass, just straight up said that he was gonna contact the prosecutor to have Jeremy's license revoked. Although it had already been revoked, for over a year. Let me backtrack a little bit. So before he said his little bitchy comments, Lisa Barker told Jeremy to go down to the DMV. She said, well, if you go to the DMV and they give you a new license, like they print out a new license and everything, that will be the confirmation that your license is not really revoked, it's not really suspended, and you can continue with your trucking school. Because at this point, Jeremy had already paid the thousands of dollars for the school. He'd already received permission from them through text messages by the fucking way that he was allowed to go to trucking school it was only when they were like oh wow he really is gonna do this that they started to kind of push back on that because they were jealous and they're haters i mean imagine if you're making like forty two thousand dollars a year and the person that you're overseeing is making twice that amount three times that amount you would be mad too if you were a hater if you were a good person you'd be happy for them but if you're lisa barker and if you're james woods you're not going to be so anyway after jeremy sat at the dmv for like three or four hours did what he was supposed to do then james with his sloppy ass walks in there and he's like oh well i'm still gonna contact the prosecutor because this doesn't make any sense well it doesn't make any sense when you're trying your hardest to block someone from living their life and doing what they need to do to make a living and to be successful as you can see on the screen jeremy license is valid he does not have a motorcycle endorsement it says none on record but when you look at james fucking affidavit it says that he did not complete that he's just this guy is a fucking liar you can't believe a fucking word he says okay so let's move on so i want to talk about the updated affidavit so he added some bullshit to the first affidavit full of lies that he gave to the court and that lisa barker signed off on and i noticed that in that affidavit the special conditions list was very very small in comparison to the first list that he sent so we went from 20 special conditions on that list to now i think that's like 10 or 11 on the list and one of them is completed only one it's always only one which is that he reported to probation and even in the updated list there are still lies there are still things on here that he has completed and he's stating that he didn't i just want to know where the rest of the bullshit went so how did you go from okay there's like twenty five thousand things on this special conditions list to oh no no uh yeah now it's only like you know like nine or ten or so he's just making it up as he goes and his girlfriend is just signing off on it she's just signing off on all his bullshit knowing that it's not true so let's go back to the day that they came to jeremy's home so this is steinmeier don't know the first name he doesn't really matter and then you can also see james woods and you can see a silver pickup truck in the background from here you can see that the passenger side window and the pickup truck is down because someone is in the passenger seat and who is that in the passenger seat with the window down it is none other than lisa barker that is james wood's vehicle now they have their own vehicles okay steinmeier showed up in his vehicle james woods has his truck and lisa barker has a vehicle too but she decided to ride with james woods now why would she do that why wouldn't she take her own vehicle and why wouldn't she ride with steinmeier why does she insist on always riding shotgun with james woods 
It doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, I understand that these images are blurry and a little shitty. I understand that. There is video footage, but right now I can't upload that because that more than likely will be evidence for this case and probably some other cases, who the fuck knows. So right now I was told that I am not allowed to upload videos, but I thought these screenshots were really important because this was the day and the time that Steinmeier and James Woods came to Jeremy's home and jumped the fence, went through his back porch and tried to open his sliding glass door without warrants, they're probation officers by the way, without warrants and Lisa Barker was the lookout, the accomplice. I know I told you all that Osceola Sheriff's Office shot out Jeremy's ring cameras. So during all this chaos that was happening, this, was, this happened before all that obviously. Osceola Sheriff's Office shot out the ring cameras but just because you shoot out ring cameras, it doesn't mean that you lose the footage. You don't lose the video, it's still stored. So we still have all of that. I made a video the day of Jeremy's arrest and then I uploaded another one, I think the day after. As we all know by now, James Woods and Lisa Barker, they watch Jeremy's videos, they watch my videos. And so I made a video and I commented on how Rania DeWitt was going to file charges or make a report or whatever about James Woods and this individual and Lisa Barker attempting to break into her home. I think it was the same day or maybe the next day, very shortly thereafter, James Woods added some more information to his bullshit affidavit. Now, I'm not gonna read all of this. I'll just leave this up here for you guys to read. You can also find it online. Um, but in the additional information that he put in, he stated that he was there and Supervisor Steinmeier was there and they attempted to make face-to-face -face contact with Jeremy at his residence. I read this affidavit a few times and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I do apologize, but I don't think I am because I read it a few times and I do not see Lisa Barker's name anywhere in this affidavit. It says Officer Woods, it says Supervisor Steinmeier, but it does not say Supervisor Lisa Barker. Now, why would he not put Lisa's name in this affidavit? Because she was there. I showed you all that she was there. She was in his truck in the passenger seat. Why would he not mention that in his affidavit? It's just very odd to me because you're naming every detail, every little tiny little thing, but you're not naming all the people who were there. Was Lisa not supposed to be there? Was she supposed to be somewhere else? Was she off that day and she was riding shotgun with you while you were at work? Why would he leave her out of this affidavit? Why would he not put her name into the affidavit? I don't understand that. She's a supervisor. If she's a supervisor, why did you need another supervisor there? I really think she probably wasn't supposed to be there that day. So in the affidavit, they also claim that they were knocking and they were trying to get his attention and he wouldn't answer the door. And Supervisor Steinmeier walked through an open side gate into the backyard. An open side gate. Open side gate. Only one person, Supervisor Steinmeier, walked through the open side gate into the backyard that's what he's claiming okay so that's his version let me show you something does this gate look open to you does this look like an open side gate or a closed side gate remember just because they shot out the cameras it doesn't mean we don't have the footage so again he only says that Supervisor Steinmeier walked back there, which is a fucking lie. He was back there too. And he claims that the gate was wide open as far as the eye could see. It was like a Christmas miracle or something. Like this person who you claim is so dangerous and so scary and is hiding from you and won't answer you and won't come to the door it just happened to leave their side gate wide open. The gate was not open, obviously. These two jumped their asses over the fence, went into the backyard, went through the back porch, tried to open the sliding glass door. These people are so corrupt and so 
dirty and they lie they lie just like Vidler was lying in his reports and he's on the Brady list now I don't know if they're gonna end up on the Brady list but I don't think they're gonna last at the Department of Corrections for very long right now there is an open investigation against the two of them I don't know about Steinmeier because I don't know if anyone ever knew who Steinmeier was but Lisa Barker and James Woods absolutely bless his heart he really tried to get in front of that story because I made the video about how they jumped the fence and they were trying to break into the house, trying to pry doors open, trying to pry windows open, and he tried to get in front of it. Maybe he didn't realize how many cameras Jeremy has around the house, in the house. And I think he was also upset because Bronya is moving forward with making complaints against him. I don't know how, but they were able to get in contact with the director of the Florida Department of Corrections and um, he told them that he was gonna make sure that they looked into it and that they did an investigation. So that's what's supposed to be happening right now. And this is all about Jeremy's daughter, the situation where she wasn't clothed and they were in the room, and also about this attempt to break into the home and enter it. Um, and as you can see, the person who signed off on his bullshit is none other than Lisa K. Barker, the person who always signs off on his bullshit, and the person who was there at the scene, but for some reason was not mentioned in the affidavit. How are you as a supervisor watching them jump fences without warrants, try to enter into a home without a warrant, and then you don't even mention that you were there and you sign off on it? How was that even possible? I can promise you, I can promise you that I have taken all this information plus a little bit more that I've gotten from other people who have my email address um, and I have forwarded all this information to the people who need to see this because this is corruption. This is something that will get you on a Brady list. They're falsifying reports. They're pretending like she wasn't even there. It's either one of two things. Like either she is someone who is a part of it and is covering it all up and just signs off on anything that he gives her or she's a fucking moron and she doesn't read anything and she just signs it either way she shouldn't be in the position that she's in she should not be a supervisor and not his supervisor anyway y'all this video is way way longer than i thought it was gonna be um so i'm just gonna cut it off for now i have way more to talk about but i don't want to make it too long my plans are for my next video to talk more about this obviously to talk about the affidavits and to talk about everything behind the scenes and i also want to talk to you all in the next video about a few attempts to get into some of my accounts and the ip addresses that i've pulled from those people who have attempted to get into my accounts but i'm going to talk to you more about that later i hope that you all have a great day I probably will have another video this week. I'm not sure, but that's it for now.